Hi, my name is Oliver. I'm 5'11 and I look like this. I'm just sick of it though. Oliver, what are you sick of? I'm talking about my lifestyle vibe, my horoscope, my attitude, my email address, my fucking mother, ever rewind, the books I don't read, the boys that I never dated, and the girls that give me high five. My CD's on freaking repeat, basically. I know. Rewind. I could leave any day and just go. But don't hear me wrong. I love my total Ohio awesome, my liberal, laid-back lesbian moms, and my incredibly sexy gay girl siblings. But fuck it. I just found myself, and it doesn't look like anything. Not Oliver, not Ohio, and not gay. It looks like this, kind of. Hi. My name is not Oliver, but Brandon Marks. And this is the second video in my midterm project in which I'm going to be discussing Ryan Tricarton, who's a visual video artist, and how his videos and movies and aesthetic choices relate to non-binary and genderqueer identities, and how the construction of these identity models um, serves to evade and subvert biopolitical power and biopolitical control. So the monologue that I opened this video with might have been jarring and totally um, unintelligible, but it comes from his 2007 um, Rhode Island School of Design master's thesis video entitled IB Area. And that video is one in which a specific character called Oliver travels throughout time, space, um, the internet, and different places, spaces, and becomes different people throughout the movie. So Oliver um, kind of transmogrifies from being a boy to a girl to a genderless being to a child, transcends age, race, um, sexuality, to kind of simply travel through time, whether for pure pleasure or simply for the fact of um, coming to some sort of understanding. And there's dozens of characters throughout the movie, but Oliver is played largely in part by Ryan Trey Carton himself, among other people, and Ryan Trey Carton himself appears in the movie as several other characters apart from Oliver, including a very funny and very jarring character named Pasta, who is a genderless um, kidnapper who kidnaps babies and gives them to art dealers. Um, but regardless, to give some background on IB area itself and Ryan Joy Carton's work, um, in the New York Times, Holland Cotter wrote, We are in a house of many tight, messy rooms. In the suburbs, cyberspace, hard to say. Anyway, it's a night. A door hangs open. A girl, who is also a boy, dashes in, talking and talking. Other people are already there, in gaudy attire, dire wigs, and makeup and like paint on a de Kooning's painting. Cotter continues to write, For queer artists of Mr. Chick Carton's generation, cross-dressing, cross-identifying, and cross-thinking are part of a state of being, not statements of political position. Like the work of John Waters and Jack Smith, his art about, is about just saying no to life as we think we have seen it, and saying yes to a zanier, virtual utopian possibility. So I think this is really interesting because it creates a possibility model of what it can look like to transcend or subvert um, normative gender standards in order to come to a new understanding of humanity, existence, the soul, and what life looks like um, within a web of gender, but also what it looks like beyond gender. And this has interested me since I first discovered his work in 2009 because I think it's also helped me navigate my gender identity. Uh, I identify as non-binary, which is someone who's situated kind of outside of the gender binary, not necessarily, I don't feel like a man or a woman, so I'm not necessarily um, aligned with any one type of gender. One person who explains it probably better than me is Tyler Ford, who identifies as agender, having been assigned female at birth, um, chose to transition to uh, be male, and then deciding, no, that's not really for me, and then they decided, you know, agender is the right term for me, and they use they, them, their pronouns, so they see themselves outside of the gender binary as well. So they say, quote, I have been out as a gender or genderless 
person for about a year now. To me, this simply means having the freedom to exist as a person without being confined by the limits of the Western gender binary. I wear what I want to wear and do what I want to do because it is absurd to limit myself to certain activities, behaviors, or expressions based on gender. And so this is something that I really believe in. It's something that I try to apply to my own gender expression, but relating it back to Ryan Trigg Harden, it's really interesting because just like Tyler stated, um, being a gender for them means having the freedom to exist without being confined to a binary and they specifically uh, named the Western gender binary. And this really relates to systems of biopolitical control and surveillance. So in Toby Beauchamp's article, Artful Concealment and Strategic Visibility, Transgender Bodies and the U.S. State Surveillance After 9-11, they write um, the Real ID Act, which is used to uh, co-gender, created as part of a war funding bill and approved in a climate, climate of fear and militarization seeks to maintain individual identities and make them more accessible to state agencies. Speaks, this speaks to the way that multiple ambiguous or shifting identities are viewed as menacing and risky on a national scale. And so relating this back to Brian Trey Carton's work, that multiple ambiguous, ambiguous or shifting identities is really interesting to look at because Trey Carton specifically utilizes ambiguous and shifting gender modes. Um, not only do genders become blurred or exploded entirely, but people themselves, characters who are clearly defined as one person, you can tell which actor they are, but they play different roles, sometimes simultaneously. So one cut goes to one person as a specific character and then Five seconds later, cuts to that same person, the actor or the artist, embodying another type of person whose gender presentation might be totally different and still ambiguous. So this is really a way for me to see how gender identity can be used as a tool of um, kind of foregoing and subverting the gender binary and therefore overcoming um, panoptical control. So Foucault's theories of the panopticon and biopolitics are really important because they foreground how states can both incorporate gender identity, so utilizing trans identity to um, name what gender is, but also how that can kind of um, control gender and by naming it, it kind of reinforces the binary. So that's really interesting. And in Craig Wilsey's article, Surplus Life, Biopower, and Neoliberalism, it goes even further. So things become even more complicated. And he states, in the context of neoliberalism, we must not only think about the connections between disciplinary and biopolitical technologies of race slash sex regulation, but we must also attend to the ways that life gets figured differently in financialized post-industrial capital. Um, and while he notes that Foucault didn't really theorize it that way, it's interesting to make Foucault's ideas even more complicated. So putting it in a capitalistic model in which economies are created around maintaining and exploiting gender, um, Trick Harton does stuff in a way that overcomes capital. So in a post-racial, post-gender, post-internet age, Oftentimes, many of his works come in spaces where you don't know what time period it is. Um, in one of his more recent works, Center Jenny, published in 2013, um, characters make reference to humans evolving from the internet centuries ago. So while these people still look human and maintain gendered characteristics, oftentimes people will imitate each other and have mass um, kind of incorporations of the same exact gender category, which therefore kind of makes it unintelligible in its uh, largeness. So in the New York Times in a 2009 article, Randy Kennedy is talking to Ryan Trey Carton where he says, the web becomes a catalyst for a post-gender world, um, says Mr. Trey Carton, who is gay. 
And then the article keeps going on and states, transvestites would not be the usual kind, but instead astrological trannies or personality trannies choosing to exist in a state of not being quite one person. So while I want to problematize Mr. Trey Carton's use of the word tranny, which can be seen as a slur, um, and his use of it as a gay man can be seen as problematic, we see here that even transgender people who operate within a mode of transition can become more than one person at a time. So I think this really opens up what it means to be transgender, what it means to be non-binary, what it means to be genderqueer, and also I think his work ultimately serves to subvert, overcome, and um, diminish the power of the biopolitical state as a means of control. So I'm not sure if we'll ever get to this point because the internet and gender oftentimes um, capitalizes on gender, but we will see, and I just wanted to give some insight on his work because I think interpreting it through a lens of biopolitical power and panoptical gaze and relating it back to Tyler Ford's message about um, intelligible genders and foregoing intelligibility for the sake of pure pleasure is something that is a great possibility for the future. So thank you.